I can imagine it now. You could create without having the stress or pressure of having to keep a roof over your head. You could study art in post-secondary without having a part-time job. And everyone would get it? Oh, that would be a wonderful world. Hey guys, Danny here, and welcome to my little corner of the internet. Let's talk about universal basic income and how it can help musicians and artists. So what exactly is universal basic income? It has taken many forms over the years, but the basic concept is that every citizen would get their own funds every single month, no matter what, no questions asked. It wouldn't matter if you had a job or didn't have a job. It wouldn't matter if you are a doctor or a cashier. Everyone would get the same amount of base money every single month. There was a pilot project for it here in Ontario back in 2017, but we did have a change in government, so that got canceled. And it is even one of the US election candidates, Andrew Young's main platforms for why he's running for president. Side note, can someone please explain to me why you guys in the States go on this like two year election cycle situation? Your election is literally not until next year. And everyone is already acting like this is a huge deal. Here in Canada, we have an election next month, and I haven't heard anything about it yet. Anyways, I digress. The basic rationale for universal basic income is to kind of take away that base stress of money. A lot of times people find themselves in jobs that they hate or in situations where, you know, they, they want to pursue something different, but the fact that they need to keep a roof over their heads, they need to eat, they need to obviously survive, prevents them from making those moves. So with universal basic income, this would no longer be a problem because you would always have this cushion of money to fall back on. Currently here in Ontario, we have two different programs to help people in need. The first one is called OW or Ontario Works and the second one is called ODSP or Ontario Disability Support Program. This is what people would generally call welfare around the world in other countries. I don't know what their specific programs are called, but those are what we have here. Specifically, the Ontario Disability Support Program, so ODSP, is actually intended to help those specifically with disabilities. And a lot of the complaints with that have to do with the fact that there are some people, because of their disability, will always need to be on ODSP and the money that is given in either OW or ODSP is not satisfactory to live any type of life. The other problems with these welfare systems is that they are generally a punishment-based system. I don't know if punishment is the correct term to use here, but the way I see it, it is a punishment-based system. So I'm going to use the numbers of ODSP to kind of explain this because ODSP actually pays out more money than OW because of the fact that, you know, some people with disabilities will never be able to get off of ODSP. Well, ODSP, the max amount that you can get per year is 15,000 Canadian dollars. And I know to some people $15,000 sounds like a lot of money, but that is actually $7,000 below the poverty line. And like I said before, there are some people who are on ODSP for their entire lives because of their disability, they'll never be able to get off. That means that they spend their entire life below the poverty line. And with a program like ODSP or OW, if you work, so you find a job, you get punished almost for having said job. So specifically on ODSP, you are allowed to make 
up to $200 a month before they start deducting your ODSP. That is only an additional $2,400 a year. That is still leaving you significantly below the poverty line. Now, let's say you were to find a minimum wage job and start working and you're making more than $200 a month. Well, then your ODSP gets deducted and when you kind of look at it, is it worth working if you're gonna lose all of your benefits? Because on ODSP specifically, you do get dental and health and all of these other benefits. So if you're working a minimum wage job, you are not going to get those benefits and then you get penalized or eventually pushed off of ODSP for working and then you have to come up with the funds for dental and other medical necessities, especially if you're a person with disabilities, your medical needs are probably higher than the average person. Do you see where this problem comes in? So UBI is meant to solve this problem by leveling the playing field and not penalizing people for making money. It is essentially attempting to raise people out of poverty. So on the current system, let's do some math. $15,000 a year works out to be about $1,200 a month. And if you add that 200 that you can make while working a month, that gives you $1,400. So if you live in a place like Toronto, AKA one of the two artistic creative hubs in this country, you are expected to live off of $1,400 a month. You can't even rent an apartment here for $1,400 a month. So do you see where the problem becomes where a lot of musicians and artists and other creatives have to choose between living in poverty or having a terrible diet, we've all heard the hustle and eat PB&J sandwiches type thing, which is not healthy, all because anyone who is starting out their own business or exploring a creative career, there's going to be a time where they are not making money. A lot of the time starting stuff like this takes a lot of planning, grant writing, um, you know, education, training, that type of stuff. And currently in our situation that we have for creatives, they end up working at Starbucks or somewhere else that's not benefiting the advancement of their career just to make enough money in order to have a roof over their head and to eat some food. So this is exactly where UBI will help all of the creatives and musicians out there. What it will do is give you that base cushion. So let's say, for example, I want to make my album in the next year and it's gonna take a ton of money to make said album. So I'm going to apply for grants. Grants take time. So instead of working from nine to five at Starbucks and trying to work on my grants from five to nine, I would have a base income that would come into my bank account every single month, no questions asked, to cover my basic needs. If my needs are obviously above my basic needs, I could maybe work part-time at Starbucks instead of full-time, or I could use cost-saving measures like getting roommates, etc., and be fine and spend that nine to five working on those grants. Another benefit to UBI for artists, creatives, and musicians is that it would actually allow us to save more. I have heard the story so many times from so many people that I know that are in this field that they don't even have a savings account. They basically save for a piece of gear, an item they need, their next project or contract or whatever, and then they spend that money and start their saving all over again. This is something that I am totally guilty of. Yes, I could cover a thousand dollar emergency, which is something that everyone should have in their bank account. But realistically, 
For example, for me, by the time I go and pay for my service dog, all that other stuff, some stuff that I'm working on, I'll probably be broke and have no savings left. And these are problems that can devastate a creative or an artist or a musician because let's say your car breaks down tomorrow and you don't even have a thousand dollars to fix your car, then you can no longer get to either your day job or your creative job. For many creatives, lack of funds is a fundamental stumbling block in their way, preventing them from achieving their dreams, their goals, or realizing their talents. And this is something that UBI or Universal Basic Income would solve for not only all of us creatives, musicians, and artists, but for pretty much everyone. It has also been proven that the more creative and artistic endeavors that are in a city, not only does it create jobs for other people, because many of these creatives will eventually need teams, but the citizens and residents of that either country, town, or province are happier and live a higher quality of life because creativity is generally our entertainment. The Canadian government literally uses arts, artists, and musicians as diplomacy to keep the peace between them and other countries. So they already see the value of creative people. And so this proposed idea of universal basic income will help them raise up more creative people and allow basically everyone to live a better life. So whether your election is next month or next year, I think that universal basic income is something that could really help musicians, artists, and creatives out there. And I think it is something that we should all be paying attention to and that we should all be discussing. I would like to give a shout out to Clarence from ColourPop for writing an article about this very topic which inspired this video. I make videos every single week on Thursdays at noon. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I will see you again next week. Bye.